Hey guys, I'm Ms. Biller. I'm going to try to give you a quick video on how to set up your pendulum lap. Uh, the best way, or well, let's see, I've looked, I found some stuff in my classroom here. I have my meter stick, which you need for this lab. Also, I have a golf ball and some string and um, this stopper here, which I'm going to use for my pendulum. Ideally, I originally wanted to use this golf ball and some duct tape. I was going to just tape the crap out of it with some string to make my pendulum. Ultimately, a pendulum is, you know, something that's going to swing back and forth, just like a picture. Now, your goal is to measure the relationship between the length of your pendulum. So we're looking at from the top um, right here to my pendulum that length you need to measure that some of you will use different measurements I do want to caution you and I'll put this in the assignment as well please don't use inches okay I maybe assumed that you wouldn't but just so you don't know or just so you know don't use inches let's use centimeters meters any anything in that world there now you're going to change the length so here's my first length. I'm going to measure that. Let's say that's 20 centimeters or 0.2 meters. Then you're going to let it swing. Um, time the amount it takes to do 10 swings. And then divide by 10. And that will be your period. Okay. Um, a couple housekeeping notes. It may be helpful to take a marker or a pen or something if you can and actually mark your string. So I would mark it at 20 centimeters and then 40 and so on. So that way, here's my first setup and then my second one. I'm going to let swing 10 times and then my third one. I'm going to let swing 10 times and find the period. I say period, but ultimately that is the time it takes for one back and forth swing. So my data table is going to look something like this, and yours should too, the data that you collect to graph. Um, we should have, okay, first of all, I'm going to emphasize my goal again, which is to find the relationship between the length of my pendulum and the time it takes for one back and forth swing time it takes for one back and forth swing. That's also known as the period. So I'm going to say period from here on out. Okay, that's easier. There's my goal. Now, my data table. You are changing what? What are you physically changing? Looks like you're changing the length of the string because you went from 20 centimeters to 40 to 60, or you can go up by 10. It doesn't matter, okay? As long as you're changing the length. Now, since you're changing the length, that's what you control, so that makes it your independent variable. That's going to be the first column in my data table. Then what you find is the time it takes for 10 swings. So I'm going to put time for 10 swings. Okay, then we're going to divide that by 10 to get the time for one swing. So your data table should look like this. The length you will record here all the way down. Record at least maybe seven lengths, and time for 10 swings will be here. Divide that by 10. Let's see, to go from here to here, we divide by 10 to get the time for one swing. Once we have the time for one swing, that is our period. On Excel, you'll be graphing those two columns length here, time for swing, oops, right here. So length and period. Okay, so hopefully that helps a little bit.
Okay, again, your meter stick is used for measuring. So we have, if I were doing this, and normally I do this, sorry, normally I do this in my classroom, so we have a lot more equipment than you, but like I said, all you need, meter stick from Lowe's, any spherical or somewhat solid small object, and string, and you can make a pendulum. Uh, it may be helpful to make sure you are letting it swing from the same point each time just to help you collect data. Now, how do you, oh gosh, how are you going to find the time? That's right, with a stopwatch, and clearly this setup is crap. So, hope that helps a little bit just to visualize. Sorry, I didn't actually do it with you because I don't want to because I want you to get the lovely data. Okay. All right. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Again, this lab is going to take a while. You have to collect the data. Maybe you have a brother or sister, mom or dad who might help you with a stopwatch. Otherwise, you got to be quick with your hands and um, using your phone for a stopwatch. So, Please just uh, let me know if you have any questions. Give yourself time for this lab. It's not, um, not the easiest in the world. Collecting the data is pretty easy. Once you get to the graph, though, you need to go over those parent functions again because the graph is going to look like one of those parent functions, and that will tell you the relationship. If it curves up, that's telling you it's like a quadratic. So period is uh, proportional to the square of the length. Um, if you get something that looks like a square root function, then you would say um, the period is proportional to the square root of the length. Um, if you get an inverse relationship, you would say period is the inverse of length, okay? And if it's linear, then period is proportional to length. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, all right, guys. Have a good day. If I don't see you again, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.